I told you this story was about brothers. In all this time, we know what's been going on with Joe. Now, let's find out what's going on with Ken, the forgotten brother. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and this is my coverage of Arcade King. For those of you who aren't caught up, go check out my previous videos. Now, let's get into it, because the brothers are playing a fighting game. If you haven't noticed, that's the major theme of this story's arcade. And as usual, Ken was getting his ass beat by his brother Joe. Joe was way too good in this game, and Ken lost every single time. So he wanted to play something different, but he lost. And the deal was whoever loses gets to check the sparring robot and preparing for today's sparring session. But his brother was more worried about him. How are you doing? Joe, as usual, tried to play off like he was okay, but his brother knew he wasn't okay. More than that, he wasn't around anymore. Joe, realizing that his brother missed his presence, was like, all right, let's play another game, bringing a smile to Ken's face. But he made sure Ken knew, I know you don't like this life, but you need to get used to it because Max is the only father we're ever going to get. Sadly for them, they couldn't continue their game. Max was here and it was time for the sparring session. He didn't want Ken anymore. He just wanted Joe. But Joe promised his brother, I'll be back. I promise. Ken didn't have a good life. And it shows in his future. Because right now, he's living alone. The only thing he cared about was his friends and his arcade. He was the only one that was here to protect them. Every time he came out and he saw one of his people injured, it was like a literal tiny blow to his heart. He made sure he took care of them. But sadly, people were always coming for them. Because this was the only place that Max did it own. Every day, the cycle continued. The employees were not even shocked. Bullies will come through, trying to force the owner to sell this building and Ken will have to step in and interrupt, making sure they knew this was pointless. He was never going to sell. They tried to play it off like, yeah, they were just playing, but he knew better. Let go of him, please. Always nice, always respectful, even when he didn't have to be. They came to his place of work and disrespected him. But all Ken wanted was the release of his boss and he was greeted with a punch to the face. He didn't react and the bullies knew it. Ken was never a fan of violence, but he never shied away from it. Which is why when they left, he made sure to hold him and tell him, Bruh, you need to stop this because one day, I'ma fuck you up. But the bullies knew he was not a fan of violence. So they took his threats very, very lightly and just walked it off, promising to return. This was a constant and his boss was getting tired of it. Everyone around him was selling their properties. He was supposed to sell as well. The money they were offering was insane. But Ken promised him, begged him even, just to let him handle this. He doesn't need to sell. He will protect everybody. He became so reliable over time that even the boss had no option but to say, all right, I'm going to trust you, Ken, like I always do. Later that night, it was his turn to lock up and he stood waiting for everybody to leave so he could throw out the trash and lock the building. And he did, but he noticed something. He had been trained long enough to know when someone was watching him and someone was watching him. In a blink of an eye, someone came and she attacked. But Ken was good. He weaved the first attack, tried to block the second, but she was better. She landed a clean hit and he saw who this person was. It was of course Minerva and he knew it on sight. He knew she was dangerous. She said hello and he asked her, what do you want? She reveals she has been the person sending those bullies every single time because she wants this property. Max wants this property and she's going to get it one way or another. Ken was feeling brave, calling her desperate that she came here herself. She's losing her touch, and she just smiled. If I wanted you dead, you'd be dead already. You wouldn't even see me coming. I'm here out of respect to make you an offer. We want to own this place. You could keep everything else, keep the money, run it however you see fit. We just want the rights to it. Ken then reveals that normally he would take this deal, but it's because it's you and Max. I know what you guys are capable of. I know what you guys do. So that is why my answer is no. She replies, you know what we do, which is why you know what comes next. Are you sure you're ready for this? Have you thought about it? And he reveals, yeah, come at me. And she said, okay, I'm gonna come at you. 
be seeing you, bro. And she teleports. Ken, however, still had the trash to take out. So he did that. Except she wasn't gone. Lurking in the shadows, she made a phone call and told her guys to make it quick. And she left saying goodbye, Ken. Knowing full well what was about to happen, Ken in the alley didn't know. He sensed people coming and let them know, I'm not trying to fight tonight, guys. But they were not here to fight, no. They were here to put him down, telling him to submit or die. And he said, nah, you're going to have to kill me, bruh. And they were happy to answer his request. They beat him down continuously. He begged, he pleaded, but they kept going. Punches and kicks, blood dripping from his eyes. They kept saying the same thing, submit. And he said, no, they kept going. And at that moment, something awoken inside him, a demon he'd been trying to contain. The scar on his forehead opened up, revealing a bloody horn sticking out. In this mode, he went crazy, grabbing the head of his assailant and dunking it straight through a car windshield. In this mode, the once calm Ken was gone. He was on demon time. You hurt my friends. I'ma hurt yours. He beat everybody down. They tried to grab him in mass, but that didn't stop him. He flicked them off like they were bugs. And when he was done, when he came back to his normal state, all he saw were bodies. Thankfully, nobody was dead, but they promised to be back. And they were coming back to end it all. Ken, however, wasn't bothered. He simply threw away the trash, went back to his apartment, turned on his gaming console, and played his favorite game in darkness in silence the next day he went back to work like nothing happened even if it was quite clear he was badly hurt his co-worker maggie offered to help but he wanted to be the strong man he thought he had to do everything by himself when he clearly couldn't even lift this goddamn game she wanted to help she told him she was here to help but he said no and when she stepped a little closer she saw his eyes he was crying and she let him know bro you don't have to carry all these things on your shoulder alone. We are here for you. Realizing that she truly was here for him, he said okay. But just like that, they heard a tapping. Someone was here. Someone was playing games. She wanted to go tell him to leave, but he said nah, don't worry, I'll handle it. And she said okay. As soon as she left, he mustered up the strength and got off his feet and went to this person. Thinking to himself, this was another bully, this was another attack. He went to this person and said, hey, I don't want any trouble, but we're closed. But he couldn't even finish his sentence because he saw who this person was. This person was his brother. He looked different, but it was Joe, and he was not impressed. 